aboard! All aboard! Ah, well, hello there. So, you're getting on this train, huh? You know, I've been conducting this train for a good couple of years now. Been through a lot with her. I remember the I got nothing up my butt incident back in 2019. There was also the Florida man who threw a Bible at a police officer. Oh, and don't get me started about the year 2020. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. <sighs> so listen, if you're new here, I got to read this uh, this piece of paper for you. It's sort of a sort of a legal thing, you know. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> Warning, the following show may feature some adult language and adult scenarios that are not suitable for those under the age of 18 to 21 years old. If you are under this age, please consult your parents and or legal guardians for permission to listen to this show. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Well, with that out of the way, will you still be getting on? <laughs> Excellent. Well, let me just punch your ticket for you. And welcome to Trademark's train wreck. Good evening, passengers, and welcome to tonight's episode of Trademark's Trainwreck on Celestia Radio, all fan all the time. With me here tonight is Random Greymane. All nuggets, all the time. And the fangirl. Make it stop. Yeah, sorry if we sound a little bit annoyed. We attempted to record the intro for this episode just a few minutes ago, but the, uh, the Discord server that we're uh, using right now as of this recording, uh, it has been acting really weird recently. So if we sound warbly, if we sound glitchy, that's just Discord's fault. I will try to edit it as best I can, but I can only do so much. So, for as long as the Discord server will hold, hopefully we'll have an episode tonight. Let's start with something that, uh, this is Greymane, one of my subscribers, actually as uh, provided to us through Greymane. Excellent. Yes. A shout out to Mrs. Greymane because she's got a little bit of a headache tonight. Uh -huh. uh, Mrs. Greymane actually went out of her way or probably stumbled upon this by accident. Either way, she found uh, something on Amazon. It is Florida Man, the Epic Adult Coloring Book. Oh. <laughs> I'd forgotten this. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Yes. Let me just give this to you, Fanny, and we'll have reference on the YouTube version, of course. So, as I say, this is a adult coloring book that features Florida Man. Specifically, news articles that discuss Florida Man. One of which we've actually talked about on the show during the pre-YouTube days. Dear God. Yeah, the the one that uh, we discussed is Florida Man stabs a tourist even though he has no arms. What? Yeah. Oh God, I think I that. Yeah, we. Oh my lord. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this. They have a fucking picture of this Florida Man, and to be fair, the artist who made the pictures, I, <laughs> they studied the fucking mug shots. So this, so these. 
people look exactly like human beings. So we've got we've got no arms McGee here. And I'm sorry for saying that, but <laughs> we it's a picture of a guy with no arms taking a pair of scissors in his feet and just <laughs> attacking someone. Oh, this is. We also have the frequently bought together list, which includes not only the Florida Man coloring book, but People of Walmart adult coloring book. Oh dear Christ! And, and the coloring book of pooping animals. Oh no! This is three. It's three for it's it's three pieces of shit for a million Twenty five. You can get this for twenty six dollars. <laughs> You can have these god-awful coloring books. Oh, God. Products related to this item. You know, coloring books. Your cat is trying to kill you. Uh, let's just, see. What's just the, go... what's the next one? Awkward family animals. photos. Awkward family photos. Where's... No, no. If you want... If you want an adult... If you want adult... If you want, like, adult art books that are actually fun, uh, hashtag not sponsored, but I suggest... Just going and buying Cindy Gutierrez's um uh book Fuckery Flowers. Oh, sorry, or... her name is Cindy G- uh, Gutenberg Baldo. Yeah, go buy Cindy Gutenberg Baldo's uh book Fuckery Flowers. She draws beautiful flowers with curse words hidden inside them. Or you could get People of Walmart adult coloring book Dirty Santa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I, actually I recommending a good book I'm by a very good at these YouTuber. Things. There are so many. God. Why is this a market? There's so many of them. Why is this a thing? Why? <laughs> why? Why is why is there an adult coloring book market? No. Oh man. Because some people just because sometimes because sometimes when you're draw a coloring shit just to feel better, you also like want funny crap to color in. I guess. A snarky adult coloring book. Some people need a high five in the face with a chair. There you go. Or how about follow me? I'm crazy. Again, there are better adult coloring books out there. Please. Yeah. I I think I'm closing this before I actually buy this sucker. Yeah. Please. We want to no, before we go, it. I have to actually give No, I'm saying please close it. Before we do, I actually have to give credit to the person who made this. So, you know, just just proper just proper dues. Uh, Florida Man, the epic coloring book, Outrageous Tales of Misadventure and Mayhem, released on August 26, 2020, by Diablo Crunkalicious and, Dav- <laughs> and Davor Ratkovic. Okay. Crunkalicious. Yes. Very, awesome. very unique, very wonderful name. C- kudos to you, sir. <laughs> okay. So, obligatory spiel time. Welcome to Trademarks Trainwreck, featured on Celestia Radio, a fandom all the time. Uh, this is the dumb news show that uh, we've been doing for uh, a few years now, before we started uploading on uh, YouTube. And I'm amazed that none of the videos so far has been uh, flagged to be taken down in before this episode is the first one. <laughs> uh so, to all the people that have been uh, subscribing so far, uh, currently there are uh, very few of you, but I still appreciate all of you nonetheless. Thank you for uh, coming on to the uh, coming on to uh, listen to this dumb little show where we just point and laugh at dumb news articles that I pick up over the course of a week. Uh, we do softcore news and hardcore news, and maybe there are musical interludes somewhere in between those. But we don't do soft core and hardcore porn. No. Let's, let's just make that. Oh clear. God, less less of that said the better. Yeah. Uh, anything y'all want to talk about before we start the uh, first musical interlude for the night? I have sweet tea. Ah, uh, good for you. There are I two have... things there. Oh, there are, it's, they used to say there were only two things certain in this life: death and taxes. I say there are three things that are certain in life: death, taxes. And Florida man somewhere doing something. <laughs> I just took a sip of coffee and I just remembered because the coffee I'm drinking is from a, a local place. I know I've uh, uh, ranted and raved about this to everyone on our Discord server, is, but is I got a lavender coffee. No, 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 no. 
this is uh, something called Armageddon. Uh, but yes, I did have... Uh, this is a local place in Florida, of all places, named uh, Apocalypse Coffee Roasters. And I went there because I was in that part of town on uh, Monday of this week. And yes, I had a cup of coffee that had chocolate and lavender in it. Now, you think that sounds fucking disgusting. And to be fair, I wasn't sure about it on the first sip. But holy fuck. I don't know how they did it. it it's... Uh, it tastes so smooth and rich, but then the aftertaste is very floral. Hmm. Like you, you, which is hard. It's hard to do anything with lavender flavor in it because if you go too far into it, you're gonna it's gonna end up tasting like soap. Yeah, and I can see people saying, "Oh, this tastes like soap," but I think the combination of the chocolate and lavender really works because, like. I felt really fucking mellow. I had the whole, like, coffee hipster experience. I was sitting there, uh, just vibing to the, uh, uh, the classic music, uh, yeah, working on my fucking goatee? novel. <laughs> did you, did you grow, grow a goatee and then start, you know, eating, like, organic food and... <laughs> and put on, and put on a trilby? Well, the cop... put on a trilby, yes. Well, funny enough, I own a Trilby. I didn't have it at the time. And the I do not own a Trilby. I own several fedoras. Actual fedoras. I have a proper fedora a myself. Mm. Yes. But And the coffee itself is organic, so... <laughs> well, there you go. It may have turned me into a full-on hipster, but fuck it. I might as well embrace it. If I'm ever in that part of town again, I'm going to that place. I'm... I'm going to that place and I'm enjoying my coffee, goddammit. That coffee was amazing. I was like, I was like smiling and happy. I was mellow for the rest of the day. It might have just been me you know, being overwhelmed by how good that cup was, but it was just so fucking good. I, I'd have to try it because some part of me says that that might be related to the cilantro gene. Mm. And if it's related to the cilantro gene, then all I'm going to taste is soap. But... Again, it's lavender, and I don't think I've ever eaten anything with lavender in it. That actually reminds so. me of my favorite coffee that, that I can find only find at a little, at the gas station down the street uh, from where I live. Now, you're going to all probably go, oh, gas station coffee. Oh, yeah, no. Gas station coffee can be really good, actually. Especially, yeah. especially Casey's The Java Estate. So mm. if you live in the Midwest, especially, you will no doubt come across a place called Casey's General Store. It's yep, a yep. gas station. And true to its name, sometimes it carries a lot more than that. In fact, they have really can, good baked goods. I can DoorDash from Casey's if I wanted to. Yes, mm. there you go. They have good pizza. They have good baked goods like donuts and cakes. and Or not cakes, uh, muffins. Muffins and brownies and stuff. But, Muffin. their cof but their coffee. My favorite coffee is the Java Estate, which is even without, even before you put in additives like creamer and sugar, it's very sweet, a little bit fruity, just a little aftertaste of it. And when you do have additives in there, especially when I get like my favorite vanilla creamer and some uh, sweetener in there, oh lord, it is wonderful. It just brightens my morning. Fun fact. I, I actually... wish they sold it in bags. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the same Fun too. Fact. Yeah, great. I actually, I'm actually really, uh, I've gotten really good at making homemade mochas. Ooh. Um, and the, <laughs> the, the formula is actually really simple because when you're making a mocha, it really doesn't matter which coffee you use because it will come out tasting as if you got it from Starbucks because Starbucks. Okay. And what you do is you literally take one of the I use the uh the Copco glasses, you know, like the, the, the plastic ones that look like the to go glasses. Yep. Okay, with the screw on lid. Yeah. I put like about two fingers of milk in the bottom of them. And the, okay. And then I put three heaping ta or teaspoons of Ghirardelli chocolate powder, the dark stuff. Ooh. Okay. And then I so mix, not syrup, but no, powder. Not, right, powder, not syrup. You can oh. use syrup, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But you use, I use a, a steel chopstick to mix it, okay? So it's all mixed. And then I pour the coffee in on top of that and then add, add whipped cream on the top of it. And it comes out fantastic, okay? 
If you don't have the Ghirardelli's, you can actually use Nesquik, but it's going to taste different. Uh, Ghirardelli's is going to have that more sophisticated dark taste, but if you use the Nesquik, it's going to have more like a chocolate bar taste. Can you substitute Ghirardelli chocolate powder with Hershey's dark cocoa powder? No, because the dark cocoa powder is not going to have any sugar in it. The gear uh, so it needs to be it needs to be actual chocolate drink powder. Correct. Okay, but you could, in theory, go and use your cocoa powder and add sugar to it and mix it. You mm-hmm. know, pre-mix it into a different container, and you could actually use that in theory. So you couldn't use it straight as a substitute, but you could mix your own amount of sugar into it. Okay, and then then use that. It's a it's a horse apiece. You got you you would have to play with the mixture, but it's um yeah it's a, making a mocha at home. People really actually really fucking simple. Um, we just I just made two mochas this morning or yesterday morning uh, for Mrs. Grammy and I, and it was Nesquik. It was a little bit of Hershey's syrup, okay, mixed in with it. And then it was, you know, the two fingers, two, two and a half fingers of milk and then coffee. And uh, it came out fantastic. It really did. Mm. But yeah, Uh, my main point is this little place in Florida, this little hole in the wall. Love it. If you're in Florida uh, and you are nearby Apocalypse uh, Apocalypse Coffee Roasters, uh, look up Purple Utopia. That is lav- That is the lavender and chocolate coffee. I, I that's actually the perfect name for that. <laughs> it's so good. Like the only word I can only I can think of when drinking this drink is purple. <laughs> like I was so I was such a fan of this cu- uh, this cup. Purple. I actually I purple. actually walked up to the it's counter. Got purple in it. Purple is a fruit. Yeah, I actually walked up to the counter with a bag of uh, the uh, Armageddon coffee, which I'm drinking now, which is. Not as good, but pretty good. Uh, and also a magnet just to bring home as a souvenir. And I went, I don't know how you did it, but this sh- this stuff is amazing. You know, and and it's always the small coffee shops that have like the most amazing coffee. Okay, it's yeah. never any of the big ones, so. Anywho, now that uh, trademarks uh, coffee talk is out of the way. <laughs> that's it that's the game we're gonna game. <laughs> we're gonna go on our first musical interlude for tonight you're listening to trademarks train wreck on celestial radio all coffee all the time except when it's dumb news <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, you can't use sand in a mocha, okay? I don't care how much of the texture it makes, all right? Yes, you can use sand in taco seasoning, and they do. Go check the ingredients, but you can't use sand in a mocha. But what if it's finely ground? <laughs> yeah, no. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back, passengers, to tonight's episode of Trademarks Trainwreck on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. It's time to start this. You think this. I'm joking. You think I'm joking. <laughs> Go look that, at the back of taco that, seasoning. It has that, sand in it. That's the thing. I no, never on. I never know if you're joking or not anymore. <laughs> and I'm concerned. So let's start this. We're all night. concerned. Okay. Oh man, I've got a real banger to start off with. Do y'all remember? Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. Oh, yes, the giant giant blue dong. Yes, we remember Dr. Manhattan. He's chilling on the moon. What else do you want from him? Well, I was focusing more on his the head that you see up front. You know, specifically the symbol that he draws on his own head. Again, he's chilling on the moon. Just leave him be. Well, this guy's still on our planet, so we'll not leave him be. We got, uh, we, we've got a Florida man. Can you tell? Pause for effect as my co-hosts look at the image of our dude. 
Florida man, Florida man. Wow. <laughs> Got a so tattoo of Florida on his down, head. Florida man. Oh, man. <laughs> Everyone say hi to Matthew <laughs> Kyle Matthew Litham. Florida, the Florida man. The true Florida man. He has a symbol upon his forehead in times of peril. Yep. <laughs> And he's 22 years old. Of course he is. The, the age of good life decisions. Letham was arrested around 4.45 a.m. Sunday, the week of February 2nd, 2021. This was after he called 911 twice to find a ride home. I'm just letting that Why sink in. Why do you need a ride home? Uh, we'll possibly get to that, but I should also note that according to the, uh, court complaint, uh, he also cursed at the call taker during the call. That'll get you a ride. Uh, Help, yeah. I need a ride home. Where are you, sir? Fuck off! <laughs> I need help. Also, fuck you. Since the police emergency line does not double as a taxi dispatcher... That's not me saying that. That's the article from The Smoking Gun saying that. Well done, whoever wrote that. So, Letham was charged with misuse of the 911 system. He was also hit with a marijuana possession charge after a cop found some pot on him during a post-arrest search. Letham, who works Congrats, as a... Congrats, dude. You... Sorry, go on. Congrats, dude. That's the major fuck up. Hmm. Letham, who works as a cook at a Port Ritchie seafood restaurant, was released on his own recognizance uh, the night afterwards. Actually, uh, he was released on February 1st, 2021, from the Pasco County Jail. Letham was cited last month for reckless driving following a crash that caused an estimated $8,500 in damages, according to a court filing. Wow. How? That no, much 500. damage. You know, that that could be a single car. If you total a single car or something. Mm. Just. That could be, you know what that could be? That could be a guardrail. Okay. Because replacing a guardrail, guardrail would probably cost about that much. Love how you're about to say guard whale. No, no. They have a whale sitting by the road just in case. <laughs> It's Florida. It's Florida. We don't know. That could be a thing. Um, no, no. Uh, like a guardrail or a barrier or something like that. It, anything that's like city property will always be overpriced like that. So, yeah, he could have easily knocked down like a, a barrier or something and totaled his car and it, it all amounted to 8500 It's not hard to get 8500 in damages anymore. Mm -hmm. Not when a fucking repaint of a bumper is, you know, $500. So... Uh, I, I just have to know why the tattoo <laughs> why the tattoo why because he's the because he's the boy who florida the boy who florida oh man next he's a he's a he's a florida horror crooks <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> nothing never mind a part of Florida's soul rests within this man. <laughs> well, we can tell by his actions. <laughs> Jesus. Next. I posted uh, proof that taco seasonings have salt, have sand in them. Posted proof. <laughs> oh, man. So, I got no segue for this because this is a tale... Actually, no. This is a new twist on a tale as old as time. Actually, that's probably a lie. I don't know how new this is. This has probably been done before, but you know what? Whatever. Teens get caught with fake IDs all the time, but this teen in particular called 911 after her fake ID was seized. What? Yeah. So... <laughs> Girl, you you deserve to lose your fake ID. Yeah, no. So, February fourth, 
After her fake ID was seized at a bar, an 18-year-old Oklahoman called police for help in getting the illegal item returned. So say the cops who instead arrested her. Three. Investigators say that Blakely, B-L-A-K-E-L-E-E. -E -E. Oh my God, her name is Blakely Sands. <laughs> All your talk of fucking sand and taco shells, and here it is. Uh. Yep. So she sought admittance on Tuesday, the week of February 4th. Uh, to a bar in Edmond, a city outside Oklahoma City. But she was turned away by a bouncer who confiscated her phony Texas ID, which carried the name McKamey Queen. McKamey Queen. Wow. Someone, someone pushed extra hard on the, on the random name generator. Yeah. Yeah, for real, like... Like, honey, your real name is interesting enough. You couldn't have gone with a more generic, plausible name. Oh, man. So when her IDs for... Uh, <clears throat> so when her demands for the IDs return were rejected by uh, bar personnel, Sands made the mistake of dialing police. Cops responded to the 911 call were, uh, were met by Sands, who recounted the seizure of her ID and the bar's refusal to return it. The teenager insisted that the, the ID was in fact <laughs> authentic and that she was, in fact, McKamey Queen. What? Like, all right. Having... So, as someone who does have a, a very young-looking face and is often a aged as at least 10 years my junior, it can be hard when you have your ID and people look at it and think that there's something off about it. Like, heck, when I was, even when I was in my mid-20s, because of, my, of how youthful I look, I would get carded and people would just have to do all sorts of stuff to check and make sure that it wasn't fake because I didn't look like I was 22 or 23 or 26. I looked like I was probably 17 or 18. <sighs> I had this so, I get, until, so I get that this can happen. I had that problem until my hair turned gray. Once my, mm -hmm. once my hair turned gray, they stopped doing that to me. Yeah, no. but I I still dye my hair, so it's still okay. Even when I it, I haven't dyed my hair in a while, I still get mistaken for like I'm in my twenties. But even so, even if I were a minor, I would not be so. And if I were theoretically to get a, try and get a fake ID that stated I was older, one. I would not be so fucking dumb as to call the cops if it got confiscated. If the people at the bar or the or the grocery store or wherever they stopped me at took it, I would just say, all right, I'm sorry, and just fucking leave before they called the cops on my ass. Mm. And disclaimer, everybody, I have never actually used a fake ID or done anything illegal. Uh, honestly, I haven't. So this is a hypothetical. So... Here's the part where her little uh, ruse here uh, start to, started to unravel. Uh, it probably happened a lot sooner, but this is the real clincher. When officers ran a computer check on the license number on the Queen ID, it came back to a male Texas motorist. Uh, uh, whoops. When confronted about the discrepancy... When confronted about the discrepancy, Sands reportedly said that she thought her fake ID would not be detected by police. They always... Because sometimes this does happen. Again, it does happen. That person... I mean, hell, I've watched enough uh, pro-revenge Reddit videos to know it happens. That when ass when a-holes who do take your ID thinking that it's fake, snap or cut or destroy your ID 
mm. or confiscated it without without cause due cause. But usually, if you call the cops, they will run the ID to prove to to, to prove to the shop owner this person was telling the truth. You had you're going to be in trouble for destroying. If that ID is destroyed, you're going to get in some. It's a federal offense. So yeah, state one at the very least. Yeah, it's a, or a state offense depending on where you are. So yeah, because like because, go ahead. Sorry. So yeah. Anytime you call the cops and say someone took my ID or someone snapped my ID, they're going to come. And just to be sure, they're going to run it. I will say I will say one thing about this, okay? And I don't want to see anybody doing this. Okay? <laughs> because if I do, I will go and I will I will come and break your toes individually one by one. Great name. Okay. She could have she could have claimed the ID was was valid and she was trans. Okay? Don't do this. Don't this do causes that. a problem for trans people everywhere. Okay? I mean, so I, I don't want to see it and I will break toes over this. Great I name. don't want to see it either because I don't want to see it either because in my line of business, unfortunately, I have to admit this, unfortunately, in my line of business and my job. I have had to record a customer. If I have a trans customer come in, trans man, trans woman, doesn't matter. If a trans customer comes into my store, we aren't, we, we can leave, we can technically take down their preferred name, but, or quote, quote, preferred name or quote, quote, nickname to be able to talk to them or and to keep and to be able to like interact with them in the store or when we're calling them for something on their account but when they first apply we unfortunately have to use their given birth name on their driver's license and if they right. haven't gotten a, na a legal name change yet and had their dri driver's license updated to reflect that unfortunately this means a lot of our customers we end up recording and knowing their dead name it sucks i don't like it so when I know I have a trans customer, I ask what you're, I try, I try to as respectfully as I can say, a request, you know, what, it, what pronouns do you prefer and what name would you like on the preferred name? So yeah, that see, I can respect them. But like Graymane said, if you go, if you are that asshole and you get a fake ID and it pops up that it's supposed to belong to a dude, and you try to claim that you're trans when you're not, yeah, you deserve to have your ID taken away. You deserve to spend a few nights in jail. You deserve all the karma you get from that action. Mm. All yeah. of it. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I'm surprised, but, I, but I too am surprised she didn't try that. Well, thank God she didn't. Wrapping up this article, uh, of course this miscalculation of saying, oh, I didn't think you'd be able to tell uh, that uh, got her arrested on a felony charge of presenting a fake ID with the intention of misleading a peace officer. Since a check of assorted databases indicates that the name McKamey Queen does not exist in the natural world, perhaps McLovin would have been a better choice. Maybe. Oh, oh Lord. Reference, that to, the, actually, reference to the other article on the page. <laughs> that, actually, that has happened. We have, done, we have talked about this on the show. In the pre-YouTube days. Next! Our penultimate article for the night. Oh, boy. Oh, Jesus. Mm. This next one just makes me a little bit upset. Because of who it is that we're talking about. Oh, before, before we... Before I continue, it's not that... Uh, this person is popular or anything. It's just the, the position that this person is in and what they did to get away with their crime. Mm. Okay. LAPD officer charged with stealing pickup truck in Orange County. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Seriously? <sighs> nope. Okay, so... 
Los Angeles police officer pleaded not guilty on Monday, the week of February 9th, 2021, to stealing a pickup truck from a small dealer in Orange. I believe Orange City is what it is, not Orange County. I apologize. Yeah. Matthew Caleros went to B&J Car Company on October 25th, 2019. And asked a car salesman to retrieve some information about a 2015 Chevrolet Silverado on the lot, according to the Orange County, oh, Orange County, there it is, Orange County District Attorney's Office. While the salesman was doing that, Caleros drove away with the vehicle, so say the prosecutors. Caleros is also accused of using another officer's identification to report that the stolen pickup truck was recovered. Caleros allegedly checked a state law enforcement system to run the vehicle's license plate, as well as a license plate belonging to a 2014 Chevrolet Silverado that he placed on the 2015 pickup truck. Thanks to, an, thanks to an anonymous tip, detectives in Orange were led to Caleros as a suspect, said Sergeant Phil McMullen of the Orange Police Department. The dealer had ridden it off, so said McMullen. He could have gotten away with it. That's the worst part. Caleros, who would drive the allegedly stolen vehicle to work, was arrested on November 9th at the Hollenbeck Division of the LAPD. So say the prosecutors. So, uh, the arrogance to drive the fucking stolen vehicle to work at the police station. Yeah, it was parked there when they arrested him. 45-year-old Whittier resident is charged with uh, unlawful taking of a vehicle, forgery of registration or license plates, and false person impersonation, all felonies. He is also charged with three misdemeanor counts of unauthorized disclosure of information from the DMV records. Go on, Gray Okay, and right, and right here we see the blue, the, uh, the blue privilege, okay? He was not charged with grand theft. He was not okay. charged with grand theft. He was though. not charged with grand theft. They did everything they could to not charge him with grand theft because he's a goddamn police officer. This pisses me off. Okay, mm. this is what because this, this is, is this right here, guys. You police officers who are out there listening to this, if you ever do, okay, this is why we don't trust police officers right now. Your house needs to be cleaned, and this sort of privilege is exactly why. Okay, he should be in jail on felony uh, grand theft auto charges. Okay, and he's not. I bet you he's. I bet you he's on paid leave too. What do you want to bet? Uh, I, say. I bet. I bet he's either on paid leave or he is facing a reprimand. Right. And that's all he'll get. Right. Well, it he'll doesn't never see say. The inside of a jail cell, probably. He doesn't say what his current status is, but he is ordered to return to court April 15th for a pretrial hearing in the Central Justice Center in Santa right, Ana. See? They didn't they didn't even they didn't even lock him up. Hmm. No. They didn't lock him up. They don't consider him a flight risk. Yeah. Mm. This is typically why I don't discuss cops in the news, but this little tiny thing, this little tiny thing of this cop for some reason going, I want a new pickup truck, but I don't want to pay for it. That small little fucking thing was enough for me to go, okay, we gotta shine a spotlight on this dumb shit. Yeah, this is... Mm. And this like, fucking again, mugshot, not, too. He, he's just smiling! Because he, know, he knows this is a joke. He knows this is all formality. He yeah. knows it's all formality that, like... He's going to either get off light, or he's only going to serve a little bit of time, maybe a month or two, and then he'll be on his best behavior during the whole thing. And then once he's done his behavior and gotten let out, he'll, he might he might not be back on the force again, but he'll be at least a, he'll be at least a free man. <sighs> Unlike, you know the, and then... The, the... The unlike other piece. people who have also, unlike other people who have been arrested for driving a nice car that they actually did buy, and been charged with grand theft because of various profiling reasons. Yeah, you know, it, I I ha I even can see them going so far as since the dealership wrote it off, 
they leave the they leave the truck in the impound yard and he just buys it at the impound auction. Yeah. Four pennies on the dollar. I can even see that. This smells to high heaven of of corruption. Mm-hmm. And I, I of corruption really, and really nepotism. And nepotism, yeah, and I, I hate it. Cronyism, actually. Cronyism would be better. We we don't know if he's related to anybody. So. Yeah, still. Mm. Either way, this is this is frustrating. It's stupid as fuck. Yeah, it's and so. Anyone else who was this? this shit. And anyone else who was this dumb would have been facing so much more. But no, he's a cop. I exactly. am so glad Sherlock is not here. I oh really God! Am. Yeah. So oh, I am if also he. Happy sure. well, I am also glad Sherlock isn't here to get riled about this. If he were here, he would be exploding, and I would have to edit a lot of a lot of stuff out of this episode. Because <laughs> he, because he would get lost in the weeds. <laughs> So much out of here. Why are you kidding? Oh, anyway, next this article, one, please. This, this orange smells. Let's let's move on. Yeah, our final softcore article for the night. Gray couldn't resist and, not, and took a little peek at this while we were discussing. Uh, oh, okay. Miss yeah. Miss Queen Sorry. over there. <laughs> it was a it was an enticing article title. I did not click <laughs> on it, but I went. Hmm. <laughs> well. Click back. Uh, well, when you're talking about Cinnabon, it's a it's a very delicious clickbait. <laughs> no jail in Cinnabon roll rage case. Oh my god! <laughs> how, does the Cinnab- how does the Cinnabon roll get that angry? Well, it's not so much the roll as the man who wanted the roll. Uh <laughs> I want to point out the the mugshot here. It look this guy looks like Rhett from Good Mythical Morning. <laughs> For those of you who know that show. Uh, okay, it's not Rhett though. At least I hope it's not. No, it's not. If he had a, if he had a flannel shirt on, I'd call him a hipster. Hmm. <laughs> so well, given his crime. Anyway, what was his crime? Well, February eighth. This is a Florida man. He threw a huge. Oh! He, th- he threw he threw a a large rock through the window of a Wendy's after discovering that the fast food joint was no longer selling Cinnabon rolls. <laughs> he oh, had fuck. he has been convicted of two criminal charges but has been spared jail. In a deal okay. with prosecutors, <laughs> Dustin Tyrell, twenty one, pleaded no contest to criminal mischief and throwing a missile into an occupied building. While the felonies carried a combined statutory maximum of 20 years in prison, Tyrell was sentenced to four, uh, four years probation, that is, during a January 28th circuit court hearing. I guess the, the judge felt pity because we've all apparently gotten angry over the, uh, the, um, over the lack of baked goods. <laughs> uh, Tyrell. Okay. Tyrell was also ordered to stay away from a Wendy's in Key West and have no contact with the restaurant's owner or his family. Additionally, Tyrell must pay more than $4,300 in restitution for damages caused to the eatery. Yeah, see, I, I, you know, it's one thing if he threw a rock through a window, but he did it while people were there. Yeah. Okay, and that's just, that's just not, no. That's not cool, man. That's not cool. That's not cool. Well, it's not cool to throw a rock through a window, regardless. Correct, but it's even more uncool. It's worse when it's a business and there are people there. He could have hurt somebody. Yeah, true. So, as detailed in in an arrest report, Tyrell was collared outside the Wendy's on Duval Street, the main drag in Key West. Uh, a witness told the cops he saw Tyrell repeatedly throwing a rock at a window unt- until it passed through the grass. Uh, until it passed through the grass. Yes, trade. Until it passed through the <laughs> glass into the crowded restaurant. When a passerby asked why he targeted the Wendy's, Tyrell reportedly replied, They don't sell Cinnabons anymore! <laughs> I'm not laughing at the situation. I'm laughing at the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Police collected the grapefruit-sized rock thrown by Tyrell and, quote, entered in- into evidence. Tyrell had been free on 
thousand dollars bond following his July 2019 arrest. Holy crap! Someone sold their truck. Yeah. His bond, however, was revoked following a October 2020 bus for allegedly punching his father in the face. This guy's anger management issues. He needs a therapist. Mm-hmm. Wow. He, he certainly does. They don't sell Cinnabons anymore. <laughs> I've never been angry at a place not having baked goods what is this guy's deal oh. I, again he clearly he has anger management issues he's gotta there's no other explanation i you know what i gotta give credit to their window because i'm reading the, the arrest report okay and mm. um it says that he threw that rock at the window approximately three to four times now this is a grapefruit sized rock this is not a small rock so it took him like four times to break the window. Hmm. So, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Just... People are attacking you with grapefruit rocks hiding in Wendy's. Yeah. Uh, just... Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I think that's it for the soccer wow. material for, the t for tonight. Oh, man. And I've got... <laughs> I've got more for you. I've got more for you, but we're going to wait until after this musical interlude to continue. Oh, man. You're listening to Trademarks Trainwreck on Celestia Radio of Animal Time. Except when they, they don't sell Cinnabon anymore! <laughs> How dare they! <laughs> <sighs> I need my Cinnabon back fixed! You just sounded like Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Gay frogs! Gay frogs are eating Cinnabons! <laughs> Cinnabons are turning the frogs gay! Menthol, not just for cigarettes anymore. <sighs> Welcome back, passengers, to Trademarks Trainwreck on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. Oh boy, it's time to start this shit. Time to start the hardcore material. And I put this article in the hardcore material to start with. Because while it's not necessarily crazy, the mugshot certainly is. I'm just going to give my co-host the mug show real quick before I actually read. Just look at this. Meth. <laughs> my meth alarm is going off. Meth. <laughs> meth. I mean, maybe. Let's take a look at the headline here. Mess of woman. Mess. Uneven teeth. Bad hair. Meth. <laughs> Mess a woman accused of speeding, not pulling over for officers, quote, because she felt like it. She felt like it was the right thing to do. I don't know about that. We'll find out about that. Well, no, it says that. It says that in the article. Oh, so it does. Stop reading ahead, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so this happened the week of February 3rd, 2021. In Mesa, Arizona, where Mesa police say a woman they arrested for refusing to pull over during a traffic stop told officers she did it because she, quote, felt like it was the right thing to do. Mesa police say that ha Hannah Clevenger, Clevenger the Avenger, was driving more than 70 miles per hour, weaving in and out of her lane and splitting the lane line in two lane, uh, Sorry, splitting the lane line of two lanes with her car near Alma School Road and University Drive at about 2 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon on that week. An officer pulled up behind her with his lights on. Mesa police say the officer watched as Clevenger looked at him through her driver's side mirror but did not pull over. He then activated his siren to get her attention, but police say she still wouldn't pull over. 
The two then came to a red light and Clevenger stopped her car. The officer got out of his car to talk to her and said Clevenger just stared at him without saying a word. When the light turned green, the officer says she took off. Clevenger was found at her home the next day where police arrested her. Cleven I can't believe Clevenger. <laughs> police say Clevenger told the officer that she remembered who he was and that she didn't stop for him because, quote, I felt like it was the right thing to do. Clevenger was booked on one count of unlawful flight from law enforcement, which is a Class 5 felony. Oh, I am I am so surprised that there's not a drug reference in this. There's article. no I reference really am because there's no she, reference. <laughs> why? Oh my God. What do you mean why? She's got a, a head tilt. Of no, no, no. I'm wondering person. why. Why is there no reference to drugs? There has to be some kind of reference. There has to be something. Here. There has to be <laughs> something. There has to be something in her system because this mugshot this is, tells me that there is. This is setting off my meth alarm so badly. This is this is going meth, meth, meth alert. <laughs> oh lord. Oh man, this reminds me of a fucking like. Oh Lee. god, it's even worse. I clicked on the picture and now it's big on my screen. Go away. <laughs> this reminds me of a fucking Lee Evans joke, where uh, everyone's talking on their uh, Bluetooth, and uh, then you see. The the person that's talking to themselves without the Bluetooth speaker in their head. And then the person turns to you and just goes, No. I'm fucking mental, mate. <laughs> I don't know if this woman's what, on what anything. Old, what, but what was that what was that old that old Robin Williams skit? Talking, talking to myself with nobody else around. That used to be my thing. <laughs> Everybody's got these headsets. Uh. Oh, yeah, that's my bit, you asshole. <laughs> Just. What? What? Because she felt it was the right thing to do. Why? Can I hide this picture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unnerving. I there, I've, I've rolled it. I've rolled the, the screen back enough to where it's, it's not on my screen. <laughs> I'm looking into the no, abyss. Even, even better. What are you doing? Typing randomly to push your picture off my screen. <laughs> Fanny sounds fucking exasperated by this shit. Do you have there. any comments? Done. <laughs> I I don't even know anymore. Just clarify, <laughs> is her name what what was her name again? Hannah Clevenger. C L E C L E V E N G E R. The the uh, Clevenger, the Avenger, apparently. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you are not like Tony looks... Stark. You cannot do whatever the hell you just feel like it. Exactly. You can't just fucking run from. The... You can't just run, fucking do all that shit. Like my God, woman, why? And on top of that, <sighs> but at least she's doing it all with a smile. <laughs> 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 oh man! Well, this <laughs> it's not even a good smile. It's what the like fuck have you done, Gray? I'm looking at our disc. I'm looking at our Discord <laughs> chat here. Oh, that's what you meant by hiding her face. Right, right. I just typed random lines into the Discord until it scrolled the, <laughs> scrolled her face off my screen. Gray just wrote fucking gibberish, so he looks like it looks like he had a fucking stroke in our Discord chat. Oh man! She wasn't even. It wasn't even the the good grin, like the Harley Quinn grin or something. No, it was this. this is a thing. It's this. It's this unnerving, like boxy grin. You know, boxy the internet girlfriend or some shit. Yeah, it's like it's it's, it's it's that grin of I'm gonna murder you in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's let's move on from this one. It upset my cat. That's how creepy that grin is. Listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. We go from Moving one police on. pursuit to another. Oh, man. 
So this is a new one on me. This really is. This happened the week of... The week of six days ago, according to this article. What day was it six days ago? <laughs> okay, um, Thursday the 4th. Probably. Yes. The 4th of February, 2021. Okay. 4th of February, my birthday. These are two articles that have happened on my birthday so far. You. Mer. Happy birthday. Happy Merry Christmas. You get a police pursuit that lasts all night long and force cops to stop for gas. Uh, a mostly low-speed highway pursuit that started in Los Angeles shortly before 7 p.m. Uh, on Tuesday of that week lasted more than six hours, forcing some police officers to pull over and refill their gas tanks. Hold on, wait, I gotta refill my tank. <laughs> wow. Okay. When it finally ended in southwestern San Bernardino County Wednesday morning, driver Michael Zinkowitz was booked on two burglary warrants and one count of felony evasion. What a last name, Zinkiewicz. Zinkiewicz. Mm. Okay, the adventure reportedly began when the LAPD 77th Gang Enforcement Detail pulled over Zinkiewicz uh, in his white sedan, and the 35-year-old man reached under his seat, leading police to believe that he had a weapon. Zinkiewicz then pulled away and began the cat and mouse game. Aerial video, which we do have video of, uh, we have video of video. We have a link. I didn't see a link. Do we get a link? I'll provide it to you in the Discord chat and to our audience in the YouTube description. There you go. There we go. Thank you. This link leads to the uh, Twitter of NBC Los Angeles, where we do have video of the uh, white sedan. It's the aerial video, which shows a Zinky Wit stopping and starting at several police, uh, as several police cruisers followed closely behind. He also drives the wrong way down at least one street and seems to go through a red light. The car's blinkers were on through much of the pursuit, and it happened. The <laughs> his blinker was on on top of it. Great. And uh, guess how fast they were going? Thirty. No, they, uh, well, uh, they were going at the heart easily. pounding speed of twenty miles per hour. Yeah, we're in a school zone. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Authorities were in contact with Zinkiewicz's family and were informed that the San Pedro man suffered from mental illness. Oh, well, that's sad. Of course he did. They were told he was having so an episode. Zinky Wits reportedly called his mother during the pursuit to say he was unsure why police were following him. I don't know why they're following me! They stopped for gas, but they're still following me! She remained on the phone with her son and with police throughout the night. A spike strip stretched across the roadway, damaged Zinky Wits' tires, eventually bringing his car to a halt. Zinky Wiss's brother worked with a crisis team to, to negotiate his, the purportedly troubled man's peaceful uh, surrender and end the drama. Thankfully, no weapon was found in the vehicle. Oh okay. While I am... So, while I am... This is clear. Did, did, did they miss that maybe he was off his medicine or just that he... He's... Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking he missed his meds because they, they, they list this as a psychotic episode. And yes. When, when people with psychosis miss their meds, it, it hits pretty hard. Um, well, I mean, I, we I can give them credit like, for that, but it's still. It's, yes, on the one like, hand. If the cop you, you should assume that something bad happened and pull over. Yes, on the one hand, I am sorry for poking fun at somebody who has uh, a mental illness and obviously needs uh, help. But on the other hand, a 20 mile per uh, hour police, police chase with with cops that have to pull over to get gas at a gas station because they're following your ass at 20 miles per hour 
for six hours. Also, Again. also, his mom had to have been going, honey, honey, just pull over. Just pull honey, over. Just, just pull, pull over. over. Honey, God damn it, just pull it's over. Okay. Just pull, pull over. over. Just pull over. God damn it, why aren't you pulling over? Again, this is again. We don't mean to make fun of mental of people with mental illness. In fact, many of our um, celestial radio co-hosts and followers actually do have one form of uh, uh, challenge, challenge, challenge or another. Mm-hmm. Or another. Mm-hmm. But in but in this case, again, this is just it's one of those things where it's kind of like with that guy who 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 was a PTSD. Survivor, because uh, in Australia, who ha- who t- who went in armed and armored to get his cat. Um, it's just so someone who's going through an episode to do something a little bit better to try and de-escalate the situation. Yeah, it's just so outlandishly ridiculous that we have to put a spotlight on it, if only to reinforce that while these people are doing silly things. It's for the most part out of their hands, and they need help so that they can avoid doing similar things in the future. My my question here, my question Mm -hmm. here is very simple. Okay, we know that the police had to refill the gas in their cruisers. Why didn't they have a spike strip out before this? Okay, Mm -hmm. this is this is a six-hour thing. Okay, you're not you're you're telling me that they can't find a spike strip in six hours. Okay, or even two hours. They have these things available. Why did this take six hours? Okay, it could have been stopped sooner. They, I, I think this is just a moment of them not no realizing what the heck is going on, not knowing what the heck is going on, and just trying to deal with it. Yeah, the other thing is, is that there's a there's a method, and Shirley will confirm this. There's a method where they take the they take the police car, they get ahead of the vehicle, and they slow down. Okay, and with this many police following him, they could have boxed him in, slowed him down until he got to a stop. Okay, Mm -hmm. this should not have taken six hours. All right, and that's my beef about it. Now, extra points to them for not shooting the mentally challenged person. Thank God. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about this. Extra points for that. Right, they get extra points for that because this is something that regularly happens with people with mental illness is that police unload on them. And this is. This is one happy incident where they did not do that, and I'm I'm very glad that they didn't. But yes, Thank six you. hours, way too long. <laughs> way too long. Way too long. So, way too long. our penultimate hardcore material thing. Okay. So we live in an interesting time where there are a lot of protests. Especially in terms of civil rights. Now, there is a... (laughs) There is a right way to do it, things. Which is... Peacefully... Showing evidence to your point. And acting like a decent human being without hurting anyone in the process. And there is a wrong way to do this. January 6th. For this case, however, we're going to look at a, uh, hmm, we're going to look at an interesting mm-hmm. case here. February 9th, Florida man, 23, arrested following indecent civil rights protests. Now, what do you mean by indecent civil rights protests? Well, I'll tell you. I have a feeling I know. <laughs> so... A Florida man arrested on February 8th for indecent exposure, and there it is, told police that he was, quote, protesting for civil rights by showing his penis to traffic. Boy. Wow. Okay. On the list of excuses excuses that might have worked for this, this is not one of them. No. It really isn't. No, it's not. I think Fanny's been stunned into silence from the stupid. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So cops charge that Riley James Cushman, 
2023, was spotted alongside a roadway in Palm Harbor, a Tampa suburb, with, quote, his pants down to his knees, holding his penis while facing traffic in a vulgar manner. Upon spotting a sheriff's deputy around 3.30 p.m., Cushman pulled up his pants and began walking away. Boop -a -doo, nothing to see here, boop -a -doo. When subsequently confronted by the cop, Cushman reportedly explained that he was, quote, protesting for civil rights by showing his penis to traffic, but now he was finished and wanted to go home. You're going nowhere! Cushman's display resulted in his arrest for exposure of sexual organs, a misdemeanor. He was booked into the county jail where he is being held in lieu of a $150 bond. <laughs> Cushman has pleaded not guilty to the indecency charge. According to state records, yeah. Cush... Sorry. Never mind. I... No, I, I, I'm laughing at the not guilty. <laughs> um, go ahead. I'm not guilty of showing my penis to traffic, which I may or may not have done. According to state records, Cushman is registered to vote from his family's residence in Dundin, about four miles in Palm Harbor. The civil rights protester is a registered Republican. Not sure what that has to do with anything, but it <laughs> just I, 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 I won't I, I won't pick that nit, but I can't say anything. I'm not surprised. I um... let us Dissect what's happening here. <laughs> Civil rights. Indecent exposure. Where's the connection? <sighs> what? What? Hmm. I... I'm speechless. I don't. Yeah, I you 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 you've lost me as well. <laughs> I, <I'm... laughs> I don't get I, it. it. How is waving? How is waving your 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 crank around? Okay, you know, protesting civil rights. What the the right to be naked? Is that what it is? Okay, it... being naked is is not a civil rights thing. One. Because it's not really censored by the government, their local laws, okay, or by the federal government. Uh, second, being naked is a safety thing. Humans are squishy, mm -hmm. okay. Humans are squishy. Why, why naked humans are especially squishy? Why, why would you think that that's anything but a safety thing? You know what it is. It's it's not a civil rights thing. This guy just wanted to show his dick. And I guess that he just did that, and then when cops started asking, he just, "Oh no, I'm totally protesting." Totally, my totally civil protesting. right to helicopter in front of the pol in front of traffic is being oppressed. <sighs> I, mm, uh, I, 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 I just don't. I don't know what to do with this one. I really don't. I don't either. <laughs> I've got nothing, so I guess we'll move on to our last article. Yeah. Which, this last article, we got some words for this article, because yes, I talked about this article behind the scenes with my co-host, to just kind of talk with them and say, hey, should we talk about this? Because, as of this recording, this particular article has been blowing up quite a bit and i'm not gonna say it's for good reason but like holy shit watching this article unfold is like watching a train wreck in slow motion which given the name of this show kind of par for the course it is what we do so Sit and attend as I tell the tale of Tessica Brown, who unfortunately shall forever be known as the Gorilla Glue Girl, no matter how much she protests to the contrary. 
All right. So there is there is such a thing as got to be glued. It's a hair uh, product from the got to be line, mm-hmm. but that is very good at holding your hair in place. It is something that cosplayers use. I myself have used it before to make sure my wigs and, or my or my actual hair, if I'm styling that, stays in a particular style. For an entire day, or at least the majority of the day, and it will work mm-hmm. when done right. But that's a hair care product specifically meant to be in your hair. Yes, Gorilla Glue is not. Gorilla Glue is not. And for those of you who are going, oh, there's no way this is real. She's posted videos. She has posted videos, and of course, and those, and those, and those, and those closest to her and involved in the ongoing saga have been in contact with Snopes. Yeah, we, we went through the effort to Snopes this particular one. Yeah, because the first person to fucking take a bite out of this news, this hot, juicy fucking news, was TMZ! And, of course, we can't trust them to tell unbiased uh, actual fucking news, so we had to double-check with Snopes. So, let me just actually tell the actual story here. <clears throat> Tessica Brown here is a Louisiana woman who went viral after struggling to remove Gorilla Glue from her hair that, uh, and she claims that neither the hospital nor the company's advice helped remove the hardened adhesive. Now is she is considering a lawsuit. <laughs> so, she has hired an attorney. And she is weighing litigations against Gorilla Glue because while the product's label warns against using on eye, skin, or clothing, it does not mention hair. One would think, one would fucking think that it would be a matter of common sense. Don't spray this on your body. I won't. Okay. This girl comes in. I've sprayed it on my body. We told you not to. I'll thoo. Here's the thing, all right, this glue can be dissolved, okay, with citrus juice or acetone nail polish remover, okay? We're not going to want to put acetone nail polish remover in your hair, okay? You're not. Yeah. Citrus, citrus will take this, okay, and it will loosen it up, all right, to the point where it'll, it'll actually soften it up. So you literally could go and buy like about three or four bottles of lime juice or lemon juice, okay, at the grocery store and and repeatedly wash your scalp in it and it would eventually loosen up and you'd be, you'd be able to pull it out. This is the second hit on Google, okay? So how Here's does the-, the manufacturer not know how to remove this stuff? Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. For one thing, they did try to put acetone in her hair. They did. They did? Really? In the ER. It didn't go well. Burned her scalp and made the glue gooey before hardening back up. And the other thing is... Apparently, Brown has been stuck like this for a month. This is according to a post from her. Okay. Okay. I, I'm sorry. All right. I, I've worked with, with hair. I have friends who are hair care specialists. Okay. If they managed to soften it up at the ER, why didn't they pull out the trimmers? Okay. I've, I, I, because if you soften it up, you can get a zero level level trimmer and you can take her hair off. All right. And then she's safe. All right. So were they just trying to preserve the hair? I don't know. Okay. Because, because the solution to me is, is from my point of view here is if you can soften it up. Okay. You can trim the hair off. Okay. And yeah, she's going to have a bad haircut or no hair for X amount of time. All right. Oh yeah. There. Yeah. There, there is but another... You, you don't have glue. 
there is another article that says that she used the product Goof Off in order to cut her ponytail. I guess to get through the layer of glue so that they could actually cut through it. She is also... Sorry, go on. Go ahead. Well, Goof Off is a different substance than Goo Gone. If she had used Goo Gone, that's actually a straight, almost completely citrus product. Okay. Hmm. So it very likely would have had a better effect. Goof Off is different. Goof Off is a sticker adhesive remover. <sighs> okay. Um, so Goo Gone is what she probably would have used, would have, you know, should have used. But still, uh, this is, this is, the fact that you just told me she used that to, you know, on the ponytail tells me that she's trying to preserve the hair. And no, you, you screwed it up. You need to take your hair off. Yeah. You really do. Well, uh, there is more. This woman is actually going to see a surgeon for professional medical help, like plastic surgery. This doesn't make it really doesn't. Really like, mm -mm. on the one hand, I do Not wish this. It. On the one hand, I do wish this woman the best of luck in getting back to some form of normal no, normalcy or however you say the fucking word. But on the other hand, God, this woman's a fucking idiot. I, I, you know what, I. If I'm out of hairspray to keep my hair stuck to my hair. What do I use? Glue. You know, if the if the names between the between the two things were more similar, I might buy that this was a straight mistake. But this is it's gorilla glue. You see the it's, advertisements it's, everywhere. You put it on, it doesn't come off. Yeah, okay. the, the commercial is a literal gorilla walking up to a, a guy, scaring the shit out of him, and then he holds up a bottle of gorilla glue so that the guy can fix like a a fucking table or a lawnmower. Gorilla glue is not meant to fucking come out. Lavender. Somebody that mentions lavender oil, apparently. Hey, what about it? Lavender <clears throat> as a uh, as a removal. Yeah. What what product? For um, no, just just straight lavender oil to remove gorilla glue. Huh. I don't think that would work. Probably not, oh. but it's an interesting yeah. idea. Well, I mean, also, there's a the whole, way, there's a whole... Depending on what's a, going on, depending on how close it is to the scalp. If it's in the scalp, yeah, she's going to need some uh, plastic plastic surgery to remove pretty much all of the hair as much as possible, maybe some skin. And then she's going to probably need skin grafts or something to make maybe cover that up. But if mm -hmm. she avoided getting it in her actual scalp, in the skin on her scalp, they might just be able to just have to, like, do, like remove most of the hair and then afterwards do a very close shave with just a plain old razor to get rid of it like that might if she didn't get any in her actual the skin on her actual scalp that might be enough to keep her from major horrible surgery and just be able to just regrow her hair naturally otherwise she's looking at a really bad kind of plastic surgery situation that might keep her from ever having hair ever again Mm. I given the picture that she's got up there, okay, I have my doubts. Um, I really do because it, it's it doesn't look like, you know, if 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 there were like a ton of glue in her hair in the picture, okay, that we saw, uh, that would be one thing, okay. But there doesn't seem to be a ton of glue in that picture. In fact, it's it's hard for me to even see that. You know, you, so, you're talking about a picture. I don't think I've seen a picture yet. Uh, we uh, well, we had a link. Yeah, we have a link. It's uh, link? somewhere up, 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 up. Got it. There you go. Yeah, if it was literally just in her hair, not in her scalp or in the skin of her scalp, but just in that ponytail and braid, yeah, it might not be a surgery situation. It might just be... Yeah, losing all the hair. She might just need to lose all her hair and then shave her head. 
Either way. We'll... We'll... Update you as it happens, I guess. I... Maybe? I, I guess. One, I don't think this lawsuit thing is gonna go through. I don't think so. This is too fucking stupid. This is really way too fucking stupid. And... All I can say is, uh, Miss Brown, if you're watching, which I highly doubt, but if you are, uh, I wish you the best of luck in, uh, again, getting back to some form of, uh, normalcy. But this is on you. This really is on you. Literally. Yeah, because, like, lot, lot, like, I don't know if y'all mentioned this. But most most glues, whether glue spray or just commercial glues, do warn you not to get it on your skin. Oh god, so yeah. Should, yeah. So that should be an indicator that you shouldn't be using it on your hair. Yeah. Just don't use any chemicals without reading instructions and warnings first. Safety Period. warnings first. There's there's a reason you don't find gorilla glue in the hair department. <laughs> And that is the last thing I'll say on the matter. You fucking moron. Hey everybody, this is a uh, Future Trademark coming at you uh, kind of in an unscripted way with the rare update to this article. Uh, this is coming uh, a few days later after the initial recording. We have an update regarding the case of Tessica Brown, and she is recovering after her Beverly Hills surgeon performs procedure to remove the Gorilla Glue in her hair. So basically, after her hospital visit and all the other uh, attempts to get the glue out of her hair didn't go so well, Tesca Brown heard from Dr. Michael Obeng, a plastic surgeon in Los Angeles, who offered to remove the glue from her hair free of charge. He performed the procedure on the, uh, actually on the day that we recorded the initial articles, and uh, she was under light uh, anesthesia. Afterwards, uh, she was able to actually comb through her hair with her fingers. So, yes, the glue is actually out. Every little single bit. This is because apparently Dr. Obeng has a, a chemistry background, so he knew how to actually break down Gorilla Glue, which is very impressive. Of course, a spokeswoman from Gorilla Glue made a comment and said that, we hope she's doing well. And uh, she declined to comment about whether or not they would add a don't spray on hair to the warning label, which... You know, again, as we said when we initially recorded this, that should really be a matter of common sense. Tessica Brown, however, is uh, not done quite yet. She has actually learned from her Gorilla Glue experience beyond spraying it in her hair. She does actually regret posting the video on TikTok because of the uh, backlash that she's gotten on social media. But, on the other hand, if she had never done that, she would never have gotten the help that she needed, so it's somewhat of a catch-22 situation. So, I'm glad that Miss Tessica Brown is actually recovering. Uh, I still... I'll still call her out for uh, getting herself in this mess in the first place, but in the end, I'm just glad that she's recovering and that she was able to get the glue out of her hair. And with that, on with the rest of the remaining episode. <sighs> okay... So that's it for tonight. Oh man, just uh got overwhelmingly stupid at the end, didn't it? I I don't know. I'm even stuck tonight. I just can't I just can't. Man, it's not it's not every night where the mighty gray mane, master of random non sequiturs, is just like I'm done. <laughs> I yeah, well, I mean, what do you say to this? I mean, this is this is stuff that is widely, widely advertised, okay, for not being removable, for sticking things. Um, let's see, what, what let's see, it does even say it in the incredibly strong. It says it right in the picture that we're yeah. looking at. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> incredibly strong. It also says Gorilla Glue, and then it says Wood Glue, and then it says Gorilla Tape to go. Okay? So, how do you mistake this for something that goes into your hair? How do you do that? Uh, apparently very easily in this girl's case. I, I, but yeah, we're 
we're done with this episode of the train wreck for the yeah, night. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's a wrap for this week. That's a wrap, everybody. <sighs> You're you've been oh, boy. you've been listening to Trademarks Trainwreck, a, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. With me here tonight has been Random Grey Mane. Uh, can we get off the train now? And the fangirl. Who is already gone. Already <laughs> she's she's <laughs> already very much gone. Uh, Just so tired. So as always, uh-huh. folks, our theme song was created by Maravex and our banner art was created by Court Awesome, both of whom you can find in the description below and you can find both of my co-hosts social media on the in the description below you can also find all the links to the articles we've discussed in the description below and with that my name is trademark and good night <laughs>